CityWorks Expo is a collaborative, co-creative, and multidisciplinary idea exchange and festival conference that happens each fall in Roanoke, Virginia. By day, attendees are immersed in thought-provoking presentations, riveting performances, and engaging dialogue. By night, the conference continues with after-hours networking opportunities during street festivals, parties, and musical events. To learn more about Expo, visit CityWorksExpo.com. Expo 2014 was made possible by these fine sponsors. Guess what? The Internet's important. Um, guess what? Access to the Internet is really important. Guess what else? Everybody thinks they have pretty good access to the Internet. Who in here doesn't have access to the Internet? There's one person that doesn't have access to the Internet, and they must live you know, in a, in a very, very rural area. Most of us do. One of the challenges of this problem is convincing people they have a problem. Because people don't know they have a problem. And so the first thing you have to, you have to figure out is getting past the, well, it might take a little while for my movies to download and I might not have the greatest speed in the world. But two of the things that you have to realize, one is access to uh, quality internet services and the other question is affordability. So those are two different questions that, that we'll try to answer. In the face of, uh, and again, I'm going to show my technical ignorance, Moore's Law, is that right? Like every 18 months, everything's exponentially expanding all across. Um, this was a slide that I took out from 2011. It said in 2015, uh, uh, you could, it would take you five years to watch the amount of video that will cross the global IP networks every second in 2015. Um, I think we probably surpassed that. Um, I don't know for sure, but, uh, but certainly uh, the idea is that if you're not connected in this world, um, you're going to have a problem. So everybody sort of knows that truth. When you talk to people about access to broadband, they always say, I'm with you, Fralin. I get it 100%. We need it. It's, never, you know, it's not a, a problem of convincing people of, of its importance. Um, it's a problem of convincing people of the need and convincing people of what they don't have now that they will need. So, so there was this great uh, 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 open access, backbone, dark fiber. Those are sort of terms in the trade. Open access, backbone, dark fiber. And it was coming from Bedford, Virginia, a small rural community this way, to another community called Bonsack, which is basically an intersection. And then it was swinging around through rural Botetourt County and then into Craig County, which is the most rural county, I think. It has, it's, um, I think, 80% of its nation, national forest, to give you an idea, 70%. So then, and then into Blacksburg. So I thought, well, why wouldn't that come right through Roanoke? So we looked at it, and it turns out it was because it was a rural stimulus grant. Remember the big stimulus package that the president in Congress passed? Well, that's where that money came from. So we said, well, that's interesting. Why can't we get it to go through Rona? So I started looking into this, and what I discovered was this. If you live in an NFL city, you don't have this problem. If you live in a rural community, there are grants and money to be able to fix your access problem. If you live in a mid-sized city on the East Coast, like Roanoke, you are at the mercy of the incumbent internet providers. And that's what we figured out. There's plenty of competition in Washington, D.C. There's plenty of competition in New York City. There's plenty of competition in any major city you want to you sort of point to. And that not only affects quality and price, like Ed told you I'm a Republican, right? Markets. Uh, although when I get to some of this, whether this is infrastructure or whether this is interference, <laughs> some of my Republican friends are not on board with me. But anyway... So, so anyway, we're in, this, we're in this hole, right? We're in the middle of a donut. It's very similar to the interstate coming by or the railroads in the, in the century before last, and you don't have an exit. You don't have a siding. You don't have, you know, it's just cruising right past you. So um, we said, well, first of all, having facing this donut problem, um, what are we going to do about it? Well, we said, first of all, we need to figure out if we have a problem. And we need to be, be able to demonstrate that. So we commissioned a study. Um, so that's step one. 
If, you're, if you think you might have an internet problem, by the way, you probably do. But the first thing to do is figure it out. So we commissioned a study that, uh, and this was a slide from that study, and this is trying to explain to you what the differential is and what you're going to need in 10 years or so. And if you look up, dial-up is where I started. I remember in my house, I had AOL. How many of y'all had that? And AOL was the only thing, right? You know, remember that? Yeah, well, that's that little teeny dot. It looks like a period. Um, Fios, which is probably what you're getting if you, if you live in Northern Virginia, you, Fios is available to your home in some, most areas, is that circle here. And then this is probably what you're going to probably be wanting in 10 years. And fiber one gigabit is, is sort of the standard right now that we think that will do it. And there's very few communities, uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee being one, that, that have that. And that's a whole other story that I won't get into, how they achieve that. But it's, it's something that's not available to run up. So we understand we need to make this too bigger. We need to have access. And so we commissioned a study and said, you know what? You've got access, but you don't have access at the speed you need, and you don't have access at the price to make it competitive. All right, so the next thing we said was, all right, if we're going to fix this problem, what's the technology to do it? Wh what do we do? Do we incentivize incumbent providers that are using copper? Uh, do we uh, try to, um, uh, you know, look at wireless? Do we, you know, well, this is the bottom line. Unless Einstein is wrong, which he probably is not, nothing moves faster than light. So when you're talking about an infrastructure improvement that's not going to be um, uh, you know, redundant or, or become obsolete within a, a certain amount of time, fiber is one asset that you can build that can always be used. The way fiber works is, is it's the two things that are talking to each other over these impulses of light that change. That's the, the upgrade in that technology. It's not upgrading the fiber cable itself in, in any real material aspect. Uh, and so light is as fast as you can go. And it's going to carry the more information that we have, the better. And, and so we settled on, tell you what, we need to figure out how to get fiber access. Now, this does not mean necessarily fiber access to every individual home. Although I do believe that in 20 or 25 years, we'll be looking back and everybody will have that. Sort of like everybody has cable access now. Kind of, kind of the same thing. But it's going to be expensive and, it's going to, and building that out is, is different. What wireless systems, Wi-Fi systems, uh, home systems all need is access to fiber backbone cable. Um, that moves it faster than anything else. And that's the quickest thing you can do. So we said, the consultant said, here's what you ought to do. You ought to go and start looking at a fiber network. Um, and it, the first thing you have to do is say, okay, how are we going to pay for this? Right? I mean, how, how, who pays? Um, so the idea here, this is the business plan actually from our business plan. And if you see the, the green on the right, that's the cumulative effect of signing up people to use the network. Again, it's open access. It's not free. It's open access. So everybody pays the same price. And, and if you ever want to understand how complex pricing can be, just ask Verizon, AT&T, Cox Cable, or whoever else to price your Internet services for a business. And you'll quickly see it's, it's very complex. So the idea is you get a flat here in year two, year three, you're starting to accumulate some money. And then uh, I think it was year four, it starts breaking even and actually generating a little revenue. Of course, that's not the idea. But the idea is to, to build open access fiber ring in your community that anybody can tap into. And what that does is it generates competition. It generates, it, it, it takes away a barrier to entry. All right, who's this guy? Does anybody know who this guy is? He's a monopoly guy, right? All right, I thought this was pretty cool. Y'all didn't laugh near hard enough at that. That's what, I told you I'm not that cool. This is as funny as it gets. All right. So what you're faced with in a barrier to entry into your market is incumbent providers. 
And the reason you've got is no accident you've got a cable company that can provide internet services and you've got a telephone company that can provide internet services because they figured out a long time ago how to send the signals over their existing infrastructure. Now, that's fine. I, you know, I'm a Republican, right? No problem with that. Sell all you can. The difference is that was built on monopoly principles. Both those systems. They had competitive advantages to pay for that network. In other words, they were given a monopoly for either cable services, which no longer exists, or telephone services, which no longer exists. But the truth is, those systems were built out in a monopoly situation. And if you want to replicate that, it's going to be very difficult to subsidize a competitor to come in and lay fiber over existing fiber and lay, you know, and start building this stuff. It just won't happen. It, it won't be available to you. So you've got to figure out how to create a, a ring or a fiber access uh, within your community that other providers can access and lower the barrier to entry. More competition, and this is, you know, equals lower price, and better quality. Again, Republican thing, right? But anyway. So, so that's, um, th that's what we're trying to do. Now, what you're going to be faced with is incumbent providers. They're going to say, we don't really like this. Um, we've got a pretty good gig here. It's not really a monopoly. It's a duopoly because there's really two of them, but I, didn't, I couldn't find a cool Internet image for that. But, um, so you got these two, usually it's two incumbents, and sometimes it's more than that, but, but they're, they're, they're frozen there, and they, they don't want the entry. And so what they say is, you're competing with private industry, and you are creating, uh, giving advantages to other uh, competitors, where we've spent all this infrastructure money to build this out. And they're right, that's true. Uh, the question is, have they had a, a fair competitive, are they at a fair competitive advantage or have they had a, have an unfair competitive advantage? So that's what you're going to be faced with. Now, this map is interesting because these are all community owned fiber. Uh, and if you look at it, where, here's the Appalachian Mountains, right? Right straight up there. That's less populated areas. You don't see this. Look at New York. Look at Washington, D.C. You, you don't see this because it's not necessary. And that's the other lesson I think that I've learned from this. Infrastructure for Roanoke, Virginia is not the same as infrastructure for Fairfax County, Virginia, which is not the same as infrastructure needs for Craig County, Virginia. So you have to look at your infrastructure needs and figure out whether or not that's, that's what, you know, what you need to do. So here's what, if, you want to, if you're interested in this, this is what I would recommend to you after doing this for three years, uh, and trying to deal with you know, getting this uh, done. First thing you do is you determine the community, and, and I, I told uh, who, the presenter, I said, I'm going to have PowerPoint, but uh, no words, but I, you know, I, I had to do this. All right, anyway, determine the community's real need for broadband. Make sure you can make a case. Define the local government's role in meeting that need. You've got to make sure you make the case and the local government's role is clear. Select a suitable broadband business model. That's going to require you to be able to prove that this will pay for itself. That, you know, at least you, you know, I'm also a business guy, so I know models fall apart quickly sometimes. But you need to be able to make a business case for it. The second thing you do is develop and strategically implement a plan of action. What we did in Roanoke was we, found, we, we uh, founded or, or started a... Um, um, uh, a, a broadband authority, which we were able to do under Virginia law. So if you can do that, bring some communities together, bring some more resources to the table, that's probably a good thing if you can do that. And so um, our authority, and then once we start getting it in the ground, we need to start leveraging that success. And that's, that's something we haven't done yet. So um, I've got 23 seconds left. That's not bad. That's uh, the end of my presentation.